Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hi everyone and welcome to Bathroom Design Essentials on the Your Forever Home podcast. It's lovely to have you here uh, this week. It's the third episode of the Bathroom Design Essentials season and last week we talked about bathroom layout, some of the ideal layout scenarios that you need to consider and we had uh, Fabielli uh, Fontana join um, as a guest last week which was great. It's always Really nice uh, to chat to her. This week I'm here on my own and I'm going to talk to you today about the ever important topic of bathroom storage. It's quite uh, interesting. Uh, I see the most amazing bathrooms, just stunningly beautiful materials, the way you open up onto a beautiful bath or vanity. And then when I, you know, you're absolutely bamboozled by how stunning it is. But then I look at it with the designer's eye and say, well, that's fantastic. It looks beautiful. But goodness me, how is that bathroom going to function for the owners? And and I see this a lot um, that, you know, bathrooms can just be so magnificent to look at but they're just not going to work. And for me, for those who've listened to me for some time, you'll know that I'm so passionate about design performing for its owners and performing for who it's designed for and that things can always look beautiful, but you need to start with the functionality first. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, It's a thing that comes up a lot. How do we maximize our storage? And it's quite interesting for me to see so many clients eyes just open wide when we start talking about what some of the storage options are for them. Um, And I suppose uh, there's also misnomers about the best sort of storage, but it's quite incredible that, um, you know, we get bamboozled with the aesthetic of something and then are just not aware of some of the storage solutions. And obviously that's one of the reasons you would engage an interior designer because they're able to put forward things to you, not just about storage, but so many different things, but that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Um, But that is one of the reasons you're going to be, um, you know, have ideas and things put in front of you that you hadn't even considered or were aware were possible. So things that about storage that are so critical um, for bathrooms, I think particularly with family bathrooms and en suites where these need to work particularly hard because you've got more than one person more often than not using those spaces. Um, Some people have the luxury of having a bathroom that may be a guest bathroom. Um, You can possibly get away with not as much storage, but if you're putting on your future proofing forever home hat on, you need to make sure that all of these bathroom spaces are designed in such a way that um, they can be used as a, a proper bathroom with good storage and function every day. Um, So keep that in mind too. You want to future-proof all the designs of these wet rooms. Um, I am going to touch on on powder rooms as well. There is going to be an entire episode dedicated to powder rooms, but because they can double up as a prep area, which I know Fabielli and I talked about last week, I do want to touch on that too. So where do we start? How do we know how much storage uh, we're going to need and what sort of storage? First thing you need to do is your assessment. And again, we go through this with our clients. We do a a deep dive with them in terms of what sort of things do you need to store? A lot of people think, um, you know, obviously the kitchen is super important with this regard, but it's really important also to do an audit of um, your needs assessment with your bathroom as well, because some people may have lots and lots and lots of things that they need to store, um, and other people may only have a few things. You know, some people may have a, a very large perfume collection or a very large, um, you know, makeup collection, and other people might only have a couple of pieces. So you need to think about what you need to store first. Um, so we always do a needs assessment where we're working out um, exactly what needs to be stored, the height of items. Um, Is there just a hairdryer? What other appliances do you have? So have a think about your hair care, your makeup, your shaving items, um, toothbrushes, hair accessories, towels, things like that. Some people like to store a couple of hand towels or even their main towels in the bathroom. There may be um, not a great opportunity for storing an overflow of, of towels 
um, in, in a, a large linen press in the home. Some people really like to have the next set of towels ready so that pe- the kids in particular can just pull out a towel when they need one. So think about how you want that space to function and how and what things you need to store and where you'd ideally like to store them. Sounds like I'm going down memory lane because this is exactly what we're talking about with regards to kitchens. And um, that is actually your starting point. How and where things need to be stored and what you need to store is going to then drive the design. So the other thing that I uh, talk to clients about is having storage that is at eye height. That is the best type of storage that you can have. Uh, Not only is it really easily accessible, you know, you're opening up cupboard doors and everything is just at eye height. That is gold. Rather than fossicking around in a drawer or a cupboard underneath the vanity, um, having items at eye height is just the best scenario. The other great thing with that is um, because the shave, and I'll refer to them as shaving cabinets that are placed on the wall, it is then it's not deep storage. So you can only, you know, there's only about 100 to 150 mils uh, in the shaving cabinet. So it means that things are not, you know, tucked at the back. You can see things really easily. You can put in little um, uh, caddies to store lipsticks and, and your makeup brushes and things like that. So they are just the best type of storage. Um, they are really, for me, the absolute must have in a family or a um, an ensuite um, type of bathroom in a powder room maybe not as critical uh, depending on how that powder room is going to be used and the size of the powder room Um, but really that is where we start so many times I see bathrooms, particularly if we're renovating bathrooms, and of course the bugbear is we don't have enough storage. And more often than not, it's the most cost-effective option uh, is to just, you know, stick a mirror to the wall. But I feel it is such a massive lost opportunity to get really good storage, the best type of storage into your space. Um, Now, it actually stores a lot more than you think. So often we'll have, when we're doing a renovation, um, you know, we're looking at a vanity that goes to the floor and, of course, there's a kicker there, but you may get one extra drawer than if it's floating. Um, And clients will say to me, oh, but I don't want to lose any storage. And it's, well, having this shaving cabinet, if you've never had it before and you've only ever used storage in your vanity, is going to give you so much more storage than you can ever imagine. Um, you know, not only is it going up quite high, so at the top of that um, shaving cabinet can actually be used for that you're not accessing very often, or you may buy multiple things because they're on sale, they can be stored up at the top, but you will get so much storage in that um in that shaving cabinet, but it's also really usable and workable storage. It's not stuck at the back of a drawer, lying on its side. Um, It's really going to work really, really well for you. I always, absolutely always, with any design that we're doing uh, with a shaving cabinet, we always make sure that there are power points inside the shaving cabinet. Uh, And this is where clients' eyes just pop out of their head. Oh, hadn't thought about that because it means that you're getting everything off the bench top, your shavers, your toothbrushes, all that sort of stuff that needs some sort of power is off the bench. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so I always do a his and her in an ensuite. So that you've got, you know, one side is for him, the other side's for her, they each got their own PowerPoint. Um, most of what you store in a vanity, so this goes back to the nervousness of, oh my goodness me, I might be losing some space in my vanity storage when it's redesigned. Most of what's going to be stored in that vanity is going to be able to go in that shaving cabinet. The other thing that we do is uh, more often than not, if it's possible, sometimes it's not with an external solid brick wall, um, is to have that shaving cabinet recessed into the wall. Um, What that means is that it's not so imposing in the space. It's flush uh, with your wall. Um, You may have a little finger pull underneath, but that is just ideal um, to be able to recess it uh, into the wall and it's just hidden away. Um, So it's not really taking up any space uh, in the room at all. The other great thing is um, there's adjustable shelves inside the shaving cabinet. So you're able to then determine um, how high the shelves need to be, how low they need to be. Um, Fantastic for just maximising what you need to get in there. So that shaving cabinet's my absolute 
favourite. The great thing now, um, because I'm such a big fan of not necessarily having a rectangular mirror in a space, uh, for all the reasons I've spoken about in other episodes, that we have a lot of rectangles in our spaces. So you've got a rectangular uh, or squares and rectangles, square shower, rectangular shower, rectangular vanity. It's really beautiful to put in a, an organic shaped mirror, be that an oval or round, um, uh, even asymmetrical, which are, are becoming more um, available now which is fantastic but it is possible now to get shaving cabinets that are round um, they are a little bit more expensive um, but they are going to look absolutely beautiful you're not going to be able to store as much in them absolutely um, but I think there can be a balance there but again if you've done your needs assessment you'll know how much you need to store and whether that's going to work for you or not the next type of storage are uh, obviously our vanities. Um, now, I do see vanities. Again, they look amazing. It might be just a piece of freeform concrete and the, the vanities, sorry, the basin sitting on top and, you know, the pipe work might be in brass underneath and it looks amazing. Wow, well, that's a really big storage opportunity that has totally been missed. Um, so, again, it looks amazing. And if that bathroom's not going to be used, again, you need to put your future proofing hat on. Um, what may happen if we have more children or whatever it is? Um, yes, it might look incredible, but what is going to happen when you need to store? And I have seen them where, seen bathrooms where there is just a piece of bench top, freeform concrete, looks spectacular or tuddlucked, a basin. There's a mirror that's been put on the wall. There is no storage at all in that bathroom. And I think, yeah, okay, it looks incredible, but it's not functional. So for me, it's a, it's a waste. It's not well designed. Uh, these bathrooms win awards, though. Um, it, it, it's quite incredible. It really is the aesthetic. So vanities are a really good opportunity to store things that um, are really not that easy to store in your um in your shaving cabinet at eye height. And there's not that much stuff, but you may have an overflow of loo rolls. You may have, you know, really tall hairspray bottles or you may have, um, you know, and they're, they're great to store um, standing up rather than lying down, which is why I'm quite a big fan of vanities that have a combination of a cupboard that's got a shelf in it and also uh, drawers. So I'm not a super big fan of really big drawers that are actually quite deep and that have the cutaway um, where the pipe work is, I just find that actually you don't store as much in there as what you possibly can. So the aesthetic on the outside is very streamlined, looks very beautiful, but I'm a bit of a fan of having a combination of both. I still personally use the cupboard, uh, a little cupboard in um, in the vanity, and I find that really quite useful um, for lots of, you know, diff different things. So, again, that's going to come down to personal choice. It is better to have some sort of drawers rather than all cupboards. Um, as you know from the kitchen design essentials, you're going to so much more in drawers, full drawers, not the ones that are actually cut out around the pipework. Um, so you are going to get a lot more in those drawers. You can get right to the back. Really good for sticking little makeup caddies in, although I still prefer that in the um, in the shaver head over overhead uh, at eye height. Um, but it is great for your hair dryers, your hair accessories, um, things that are just not going to go. They're not going to be able to stand up in a shaving cabinet, or they're just they're too deep for the shaving cabinet, um, or they really need to lie down like your hair dryer and so forth. So the other thing I see happen is people get it all designed. And again, they haven't done their needs assessment. They haven't worked out what they need to store and how. And the drawer is either too narrow, it's, it's just not wide enough. Um, these tiny little dicky drawers on the side that are good for nothing, or um, they're not deep enough. So you can't actually get the height of the hairdryer in there because they're these tiny little drawers. So, so and I see this a lot with off the shelf, really um, cost effective or, you know, dare I say it, a little bit cheap and nasty um, that they've got a whole lot of, you know, you know, have five or six drawers on one side of the vanity, but they're tiny, they're pokey, they're narrow and they're not deep enough. They're really not going to store anything. So I think they're an absolute waste. And this is a false economy. Uh, it might be, oh, well, I'm going to get the vanity off the floor and, you know, it's it's got lots of drawers. Well, that's great, but actually how do you need to store your things? So uh, if you can't actually use those drawers properly, that's a really big false economy, poor design. Um, 
So as with, um, you know, kitchens, like I was saying, I like a combination of both. I like having a cupboard and I like having some drawers. In an ensuite, if there's space, I love having the opportunity to have a bank of drawers for her and a bank of drawers for him. Um, and then they might have a cupboard each as well. Again, that's going to come down to, to space. Make sure you have the drawers deep enough for what you need to store. You need to go back to your needs assessment. We do this with our clients. We're making sure that everything is going to be the right size, right height, right depth, so that you can um, get what you need in. Um, but this stack of shallow drawers is really just going to be completely useless. False economy. Um, now, with regards to a powder room that is um, next to the main bathroom, because uh, that's obviously something that we spoke about last week. It's really good to have the toilet separate. Um, I would, if you can, get a vanity in there, even if it's a small vanity, um, because it is going to be absolute gold when you've got multiple children trying to get ready at the same time. Um, they don't want to be in the bathroom at the same time. I know my kids will be constantly fighting you're taking up more space than uh, me and I haven't got access to this and blah 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 so already at nine and ten my kids have separated and they actually now have their separate getting ready spaces um, brushing their teeth spaces so because we've got a vanity in the powder room right next to the family bathroom they've got their separate getting ready spaces so if you've got a little vanity in there it just means that there's a space for their toothbrush and um, whatever else they need to have in there so that they can get ready. And you can imagine two teenage girls getting ready. And if they don't want to get ready together, they can put all their makeup in that vanity and so forth. So again, it would be a personal preference whether you want a shave, shaver cabinet above um, the, the vanity in your powder room. Um, but having a small vanity in there with some storage is definitely going, going to enable you to have that powder room as an additional getting ready space, which for me is gold because it means less arguments. It means they can get faster ready. So for me, that was just um, well worth the investment of getting a vanity in there. Again, it's going to come down to space um, and as to whether you can to get that in. Another storage solution is the use of shelves. Now, these can be floating. Sometimes it's really nice to have a floating shelf along a bath. Uh, you might have a floating shelf at the end of the bath. Um, open shelves is part of the vanity design. Sometimes people like to have an open area. They might roll their towels. It can break up a really long vanity. Um, so rather than it all being closed cabinetry, you can actually have some open shelves. Again, can be really nice to use for decorating, having some towels in there. Um, so it is sometimes nice to have open shelves. But again, it's going to come down with what you need to store. Just like having glass fronted kitchen cupboards, you need to make sure that what's in there, what's behind is going to be um, nice and neat. So if you know you need to stuff a whole lot of stuff in that vanity, um, it may not be advisable to have open shelves. It's not, I don't think it's really necessary if you've got well-designed cabinetry, your shaver cabinet and your vanity, I don't really feel um, that you need open shelves anywhere else in the bathroom, except maybe where the bath is. Um, but you may have a shelf in the uh, shower to store shampoos and so forth, although I'm going to get to another solution for that um, in a moment. I'm not a huge fan of those. They generally tend to sag. Um, they generally, um, you know, they get dirty really quickly. Um, they, they never, um, I, I just don't feel that they stand the test of time and they don't look that great either. So I think that if you can avoid them and get a shower niche in instead, it's a much nicer aesthetic. It's a lot more seamless than having, you know, a, a shelf that's sitting in the shower. Um, so... The other place it's nice to have a shelf is underneath your shaver cabinet, you can have a really nice, can be timber, but it's almost like a feature shelf and it can be lit in a really beautiful way. You might have a little plant there, you may have a candle, um, but it's also an area that you may have some nice perfumes on display or just uh, items that you access on a frequent basis. So that's a really nice idea to have a shelf that's sort of part of the shaver cabinet and it becomes almost a, a feature shelf as well. Um, but I really feel that if you've got a really well-designed um, cabinetry and so, yeah, cabinetry, you, you don't need to have then separate shelves elsewhere in the bathroom. Which is then going to lead to my next point around shower niches, which is obviously another spot 
that we need to store items. And that is when we're in the shower, um, we've got shampoos, body wash, um, face wash, whatever it is that we use. Um, it's great to have a shower niche rather than having a shelf, as I was saying before. So they're excellent because they become seamless uh, in the wall. Um, I'm not a fan of having a shower niche that is in a different tile to say, hey, look at me. Um, it, it's having it seamless and therefore um, having it with mitered edges makes it a much superior finish. And again, you're getting that seamless look. It's recessed into the wall, might be a bit tricky if it's on an external wall that's solid brick, but it's much neater and everything is then off the floor of the shower. They're also really great uh, where you do have a bath. You can then have a niche uh, either at the side of the bath or at one end of the bath. Really nice to put a candle. You might have a little plant in there. Really nice for decorative elements. It obviously doesn't get as wet as what it's going to be in the shower. So you can sort of um, decorate that a little bit more, but it's a beautiful spot um, to have some things, particularly where the bath is that you can easily access. You need to make sure, oh, I don't know how many times I see this on groups, um, that people have got their shower niche and it hasn't been designed properly. There's no fall on it. And so all the water starts pooling in it. So you need to make sure it's designed properly um, so that it's got a little bit of a fall and the water will then actually run out of that shower niche rather than being a pool of, of all the water. Um, and really avoid, um, you know, your metal trim on those. It just really is not a beautiful finish. It's sort of, oh, I suppose I can't say it any other way. It looks a little bit cheap and nasty. Uh, it's so much nicer to have a mitered edge. It's a much cleaner finish. It's a superior finish. It's a lot more detailed and it just makes it so much more seamless than having this big silver or brass or black frame that's going around um, your shower niche. Uh, lots of different sizes that you can have. It can be the same uh, length as a tile. They need to be planned out early on. You need to know your tiles so that you're not having a big grout line in the middle. So make sure that you're thinking about that as well. So in summary, you need to start with your storage when you're designing your bathroom. What do you need to store? How do you need to store it? Where do you ideally want to be able to store it? And talk to um, a designer or a group because there'll be a lot of ideas that you don't necessarily, you haven't necessarily thought of, that you don't necessarily know is possible. And um, when we're working in smaller rooms, much smaller than kitchens, we do need to make sure that the, the storage is adequate. So um, getting those ideas and making sure that those spaces, the smaller spaces, our wet rooms are going to work much harder for us is really, really important. And there's always new things coming out all the time in terms of how things can be stored, the hardware that can be used. Um, so start with your storage. It's what we start with. We do not pick up any um, pen and paper or CAD or anything until we understand what our clients need to store and how they ideally want to do it. Exactly the same process as what we do with our kitchens. A bathroom needs to function first. Remember that you're, it's a space you need to use. It's not a space you're going to be sitting in. It needs to look beautiful, but it needs to function. It needs to work for you. And if it's not designed properly, it's going to drive you nuts because you're not going to be able to get what you need in there and store it how you want to be able to store it. So it's always function over form. We can always make things look amazing. There's nothing worse than a stunning looking bathroom like all these award-winning bathrooms uh, and not, I, I must caveat that, not all award-winning bathrooms have got lack of storage. Uh, some of them do. Um, but if it doesn't work, it's poor design is just so incredibly frustrating. So I hope that's really helped you assess how you're going to create really awesome storage in your bathroom and make sure that it's going to work for you it's going to double up for you. It's future-proofed and um, you've got all your ducks in a row and you know exactly where things are going to go. Um, that's it from me this week. Uh, don't forget, a uh, couple of shout-outs. We've got um, the... Kitchen Design Essentials Masterclass. So the Forever Home Kitchen Masterclass is on next Wednesday. So the 17th of February, if you're listening to this as it's been released on the 11th of uh, February. Uh, that's at 7 p.m. at Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time on the East Coast. And uh, it's free. I'm going to share so much information with you about kitchens. So make sure you register at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au on the events page. 
And uh, there is also um, book a chat. If you're getting a bit stuck with your bathroom design and this has prompted you to think, mm, I really need someone that's going to be able to design this for me, book a chat with me. You get access to my diary. Let's have a 15 minute chat about how we may be able to help you. There's so many different ways you can tap into our expertise. It's not fixed. Um, you know, it might be a little bit, it might be a lot. It just depends on your needs. We're super, super flexible. So book a chat with me, always there. And uh, there's a new blog uh, that's gone out this week as well, all about kitchen layouts. So make sure you check that out on the blog page too. All right, that's it from me. Have a fantastic week uh, and weekend. Uh, I am going to be just luxing it out this weekend by not doing much at all and I certainly look forward uh, to that too. So I feel that post-COVID we have been, our lives have just gone back in Australia, it was particularly in Melbourne, to this super, super busy, oh my goodness me, I've got so much stuff on on the weekend and I'm trying to slow that down again. So there's only one social engagement uh, on the weekend and not two. So I've got some time to recharge, read my paper and um, and just spend some time with my family. Have a great weekend and um, see you here next week for the Bathroom Design Essentials season. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help to create a beautiful and functional forever home, you can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.